Welcome to our class, COVID-19 and the family. In this mini lecture, we'll be looking at the family and the impacts that COVID-19 has had and continues to have on families in our society. In this mini lecture, I will give a brief overview of different sociological approaches to studying the family. Then we'll consider several ways that the family is shifting under COVID-19, and I'll offer some guiding questions to help you process the rest of this lesson. Before we begin to discuss and think of family sociologically, I have two questions for you. First, what does family mean to you? And second, how would you define the word family? In sociology, we observe and analyze the family as a social institution. So the sociological definition of the family is, quote, a social institution found in all societies that unites people in cooperative groups to care for one another, including any children. You might ask, but how does the family act as a social institution? Well, a social institution is defined as any complex form of social organization that combines a variety of social positions norms and values that organizes relatively stable forms of human social interaction with respect to fundamental issues such as the reproduction of individuals and the conditions necessary to sustain life. Basically a habitual way that humans meet their needs in groups. In the next few slides we will look at the different theories and perspectives used by sociologists that explain the different ways that families are necessary to ourselves as fundamentally social beings. Today there are many different family and household formations beside the nuclear family. For instance, it's very common for individuals to live in multi-generational households. Likewise, some queer and LGBTQ2 plus families have parents who are in polyamorous relationships, and families are not always made up of individuals with shared biological descent. For example, chosen families are defined as non-biological kinship bonds, whether legally recognized or not, deliberately chosen for the purpose of mutual love and support. In sociology, these types of bonds and relationships are forms of social kinship. Social kinship is a fundamental social tie shaped by patterns of sociability and a sense of alliance and affiliation. This doesn't necessarily need to be determined by shared biological origins. Here we can see that the definition and meaning of family is vast and expansive. There are three main theoretical approaches that sociologists use to gain insight into the family. Structural functional theory, social conflict and feminist theory, and symbolic interaction and social exchange theory. Thinking about earlier in the course, we discussed C. Wright Mills and the sociological imagination, which looked at society and individuals at the micro and macro levels. Structural functional and social conflict and feminist theory are used to analyze families at the macro level. So analyzing the family as a broader social institution. Whereas symbolic interaction and social exchange theories are used to analyze families at the micro level. So here, sociologists would analyze individuals' own relationships and experiences every day with the family. Now, we are going to dive deeper into each theory in order to see how the family works as a social institution. First, in structural functional theory, structural functionalists view society as a machine, with each part of the machine serving a specific function. They all view the family as the backbone of society, as it performs tasks that are vital to society, such as socialization. Through socialization within the family, individuals are taught what is right and wrong and norms, values, and skills that are necessary for their survival in society. The family is the primary institution that does this from a young age. Regulation of sexual activity. Families also regulate sexual activity as norms and perspectives on marriage and reproduction are passed down generationally. And also social taboos such as incest, which is a learned taboo. And third, social placement. Social identities are also passed down from parents, such as social class, religion, and race and ethnicity. 
From this perspective, we might say that families maintain social stratification. Lastly, material and emotional security. Structural functionalists state that families provide emotional support, protection, and financial assistance, where for some, the family is a haven from the outside world, at least in an ideal vision. Like structural functionalists, social conflict and feminist theorists also see the family as a vital aspect of life. However, this theoretical approach highlights how the family perpetuates social inequality. According to social conflict and feminist theorists, social inequality is maintained in three ways through the family. First, property and inheritance, since in various cultures and countries around the world, past and present, property is passed down through male heirs. Also, passing down wealth allows families to maintain their wealth through the next generations and, as a result, reproduces class structures in society. Second, patriarchy maintains gender roles of men and women and the male suppression of women, including the second shift in which the majority of women take on an additional shift beyond their paid work, which we will discuss in more depth in a few slides. Thirdly, social inequality can be maintained through racial and ethnic categories, which persist over generations, only to the degree that people marry others like themselves. As mentioned before, symbolic interaction and social exchange theorists analyze the family at the micro level by looking at how individuals' experiences shapes family life. While symbolic interaction and social exchange theories are similar in scope, they focus on slightly different experiences within the family. For instance, symbolic interaction theory focuses on the family by exploring individuals' relationships within their own families, such as kinship ties, emotional bonds, trust, and processes of sharing fear. Social exchange theory, though, describes courtship and marriage as forms of negotiation. So this theory examines what individuals bring to the marriage market, things like wealth, beauty, power, and so on. After learning about these three theoretical approaches, albeit quite briefly, if you are researching the family, which theory would you use and why? No theory is necessarily better than one another, it just depends on your topic and desired approach, as well as the assumptions that you are making about reality and society. So how has COVID-19 impacted the family? Recent research and data suggest that the COVID-19 pandemic has increased prior and ongoing issues within the family, such as the unequal distribution of domestic labor between partners, domestic violence, insecurity related to finances, housing, jobs, and food, mental health and well-being challenges, as well as the loss of support and connection amongst friends and family. Although some sociologists refer to the family as a haven from the outside world, as we will uncover, this is not always the truth for everyone in society.